The Romance of the Ranchos. Sonora, 1850. Mysterious slaying of American miners. Los Angeles, 1850. The entire state terrorized by bandit Joaquin. Tulare Valley, 1851. Rangers finally end career of famous desperado. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a weekly dramatization of the colorful events and characters who make up the history of early California. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns with another authentic story of The Romance of the Ranchos. The offices of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles are among the many places where you may purchase United States savings bonds and stamps. The company makes two suggestions in connection with your savings bond purchases. First, always consider them as a sound investment, which they are, and never as a contribution. Second, determine just how much of your income you can possibly invest. Then set up a regular schedule for your savings bond buying and stick to it. As a starter, resolve tonight to buy a savings bond tomorrow. And now here to tell us the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Tonight we turn to a story of violence and terror. A story of the most famous and the most feared bandit who ever roamed the hills and valleys of our California. Often painted as the Robin Hood of the West, he was in reality a young man blinded by revenge who became one of the most bloodthirsty highwaymen of history. The dramatic story of Joaquin Murrieta is a dark chapter from the romance of the ranchos. The story of Joaquin Murrieta starts peacefully enough. Brought up of a good family in Sonora, Mexico, and steeped in the traditions of chivalry and culture of the old Spanish Californians, he was a handsome, intelligent, and thoroughly honest young man. Like most Mexicans, he was upset by the Mexican War. But he took the defeat philosophically, and even forgave the Americans to the extent of deciding to make American California his home when in 1849 gold was discovered here. And so it was that at the age of 18, he prepared to leave his home and ride north to the gold field. The souls, querida mia, we are on our way. I see. It makes me a little sad to leave our home, Joaquin. See, si, but just think. In a few years, maybe even months, we can return here, wealthy, with enough gold to live in comfort for the rest of our lives. See, si, but I, I cannot help feeling that we might be happier if we stayed here, where we belong. Nonsense. Besides, it is too late now. We are already started. Look back. Take a last look at the village and say goodbye. I cannot look back. Joaquin! Joaquin! Ah, it's Clarita waving to me. And I have not said goodbye. Querida mia, will you excuse me for a moment and I will say hasta la vista to her? See, si, I will wait here. Tell her adios for me, too. See, si, I will. Hola, senorita Clarita. Joaquin, you were leaving without an adios. I am sorry, senorita. We have been so busy getting ready, I had no time. But I am happy to have this chance to say hasta la vista. Joaquin, you will come back soon? Oh, see, si. We will not be gone such a long time. Oh, only one, maybe two years. Oh, that is a long time. We, we of the village shall miss you. Gracias, Clarita. I shall miss all of you, too. I, I have a momento for you here. I, I want you to have it. What? A ring? Oh, but, senorita, it is beautiful. And too valuable. No, I cannot accept it. But you must. It it will bring you good luck. Keep you safe from harm. Wear it always in memory of... of our childhood days. Our childhood days, Clarita? Ah, see, we had great fun together, eh? See, 
pretty. Cheer, cheer, tears. Come, little one, you must not waste tears on me. Save them for your husband to be. No, I shall never marry. Never marry? No. For even though you have married another now, my heart is yours, as it has always been. Adios, querido. Querita, querita, come back. Well, adios. Adios, amiga mia. Mm. You have said your adios? Si. Sí. She gave me a ring, querida. It is for you, to keep you safe. Here, give me your hand. No, Joaquin, it is not for me. I understand. You must wear it for her. And perhaps, perhaps it will keep you from harm. <laughs> Leaving his broken-hearted childhood playmate behind, Joaquin and his lovely young wife, Carmen, journeyed north into California. Soon they reached the gold fields on the Stanislaus River and took up a claim. It was a good one, and soon they were prospering. But Joaquin was a Mexican, and there were certain rough characters in the little mining camp who resented anyone but Americans. One day, five of the hoodlums came to Joaquin's cabin. See? What is it? We're here to tell you that you're getting out of this camp. What? But, senores, you must be making a mistake. This is there my... There's no mistake, hombre. You're moving along. We're taking over your claim here. Who says so? We do. We're sick and tired of having you Mexicans taking out gold that belongs to us good American citizens. We're going to run all you foreigners out of these parts. Senor, I have as much right as you to mine here. I have paid my money. It don't tax. matter what you paid. You're through, get me? If you won't get out bag and baggage your own free will, we'll run you off. You'll not run me off my own land. No. Maybe you'd rather be carried off in a pine box. Joaquin, Joaquin, what is it? Why are they threatening you? Stay inside, kitty. That is not a Hey, for a Mexican, you're a pretty piece of calico. Me and you could get along all right. Senor, you're speaking to my wife. Yeah? What she sees and you is beyond me. <laughs> Senores, I shall ask you to leave my house. Oh, no, you don't. You're the one that's getting out. Take your hands off me, you filthy brute. You're drunk. A filthy brute, am I? I'll teach you a lesson or two. There. Look out. So, you want to fight, senor? <laughs> Very well. Joaquin, Joaquin, stop. you. Good work, yeah. Yeah, honey, nothing to worry about. This little tap on the head. But he won't bother us none for a while. Senor, stay away from me. Stay back. Oh, come on now, honey. I ain't so bad when you get to know stop. me. Stop! I got you. Stop! Let me go! Why, you stop. little vixen, pull a knife, would you? Here, give it to me. Stop, hey, please, stop. Go away. Me. You're going to get hurt if you don't watch out. Give Let me a look. that knife. Oh. Why, you... Oh. 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 Well, she asked for it. I didn't want to hurt her, but she asked for it. When Joaquin Murrieta regained consciousness, he found beside him the lifeless body of his lovely young wife. Wildly, he vowed vengeance on the rowdies who had killed her, but his friends calmed him. And soon he left the camp and went to stay with his brother Jesus in Murphy's Diggings, another mining camp. There he was present as his brother made a financial transaction. Well, sure, why not? Two dollars. But, senor Lang, you want two American dollars? Well, sure, it's a good mule. You can't get a better one in these parts for less than three. Ah. Yeah, very well, I will pay. Hmm? <laughs> one, two, pesos. Well, much obliged, Moretta. You got a good bargain. I'm not too sure, Jesus. Eh? You think I'm lying? I did not say that, senor. I meant only that perhaps the mule is a little old. And may not live up to the bargain you think him to be. Yeah, well, you be careful of your tongue. I'll be going now. Adios. Yeah, adios, senor. Why is that? Joaquin, stop. Put your gun back in his holster. These Americanos. There are villains. All of them. Why don't you let me kill him? Oh, Joaquin, my brother, what good would that do? You must forget this hatred of Americanos. They're not all bad. See. Si. Of course, you are right, Jesus. Bueno, from now on, we shall try to forget the past and get along with the Americanos, no?
But it was only the next day when Joaquin Murrieta borrowed his brother's mule and rode into town. As he rode down the main street... Hey, you! Wait a minute! See? What is it you want, Senor Lang? Uh, what are you doing with my mule? Your mule, senor. Oh, but you know that this is not your mule. It belongs to my brother. Why, you're lying, you sneaking thief. You stole my mule. Hey there, men, come here. This here dirty Mexican stole my mule. Senor, what are you trying to do? You know that this is my brother's mule. It is not stolen at all. Oh, shut up. I say this is my mule. It was stolen from me just yesterday. It is not stolen. Yeah, then where'd you get it? It is my brother's. He bought it. Well, then your brother stole it. Please, senores. Let me explain. Uh, uh, what's this all about? Joaquin, what's the trouble? Ah, oh, senor Burns, amigo mio, you must help me. This man says I stole his mule. Sure he did. We don't need you poking your nose in here, Burns. We can handle this all right. You wouldn't be fixing to have a necktie party by any chance, would you, Lang? Well, now, maybe we are. We got to have some justice against these horses. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Lang. Yeah, and what business of it is yours? Joaquin? Joaquin, where'd you get this mule? It is my brother's, and he bought it. And I say it's mine. It was stole from me yesterday. Well, that's right. I know that mule anywhere. So I admit that it was Senor Lang's mule, but... There, you see, he admits it. Come on, boys, let's string him up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Joaquin, you say that your brother bought the mule. Who from? Yeah, who from? You should know, Senor Lang. He bought it from you. Huh? What's that? Well, now, what do you got to say about that, Larry? I say he's lying. That mule was stolen. And I say he's not lying. Joaquin is honest. I'd rather believe him than you any day. Hey, is that so? Well, boys, what do you think of that? He's hurting his own kind, huh? Well, let's show him what we think of his friend. Come on, we'll get Murrieta's brother and bring them both up. <laughs> Quickly, the drunken, bloodthirsty mob went to the cabin of Jesus and dragged the two brothers to a tree, giving them no chance to offer any explanation. But once more, the American Bill Burns tried to intercede. Ah, tie that noose good and tight. We'll make him squirm. Now listen, man, listen to me. You can't do this. If I can't stop you from hanging this man, I can't stop you from doing the same thing to his brother here. Joaquin didn't steal the mule. If it was stolen? Well, maybe not, but he tried to cover up for his brother. But he didn't steal it. You can't kill a man for something he didn't do. I say he's just as guilty as the other. And I say he's not. So what about it, you men? Come on. Has anyone got the courage to speak up for an innocent man? Well, give him the lash then. Teach him better manners. Yeah, that's right. The lash will teach him to call an American a liar. I'll give him 39 strikes myself. That'll be more fun than hanging. Oh, but he doesn't deserve such humiliation. He's done nothing. Listen here now, Burns. If you don't shut up, we'll string you up alongside of him. All right, boys, tie him to that tree. Strip his clothes down and get me the light. Well, uh, I'm sorry, Joaquin. I did my best. I know. Gracias. That's it. Now lay him down there where I can get a good swing. Now then, for the 39 lashes. Count them. Here goes. Joaquin, huh? Joaquin, here. Drink this. Oh, mm. you poor devil. He cut you to ribbons. They've gone? Yeah, been gone for a long time. It's night already. Here, let me cut that rope. There you are. Now you're free. Here, let me help you. Just lie down for a minute. Jesus, where is he? Oh, I haven't had time to cut him down yet. Senor, they shall pay for this. Joaquin, I know how you feel. But you gotta get such thoughts out of your mind. Senor Burns, you are my friend. You have been kind. I shall not forget that. But all other Americanos, they shall pay. As I lay there under the lash with each stroke, I swore revenge. Revenge against all Americanos. I will show them no more mercy than they have shown me. From now on, I vow death and destruction. To all Americanos. Buenas noches, Senor Lang. Uh, who's there? Come, Senor Lang. Don't you know me? Uh, who is it? What do you want? 
enough to scare a man to death, confronting him like this on a lonely trail at night. No, Senor Lang. I do not wish to scare you to death. That would be too easy. Say, what are you talking about? Who are you? You haven't recognized me yet? Come, Senor Lang. Perhaps I should bear my back. You would no doubt recognize me by the scars. Uh, Marietta, what do you want? Justice and nothing more. Oh. There, Senor Lang. You will never again cheat and murder. You are the first to die by my hand, but you will not be alone. Soon many others will join you. Let all Americans beware of the vengeance of Joaquin Murrieta. Back through time to long before the days of Joaquin Murrieta, go the records of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. Some of the ranchos the bandit raided had been granted half a century before he launched his war against the Americanos. And each time one of those ranchos or any part of it changed hands, one or more written instruments were executed and filed for record. The reason title company records must go back to the very beginning and include every transaction up to the present day is that land titles are somewhat like a chain. They're only as strong as their weakest link. If any link in the chain of title is defective, the entire title may be defective too. When you buy a property, you want to know that you really become its owner. To ensure your ownership, the company seeks out the public records of every transfer of land's ownership from the very first to the most recent, determines their authenticity, and assembles in its title plant essential data from these and other sources where they will always be available. One by one, the men who'd been in the lynching party that whipped Joaquin Murrieta were mysteriously murdered. Terror spread through the camp. Men were afraid to venture outside the town. Five men mysteriously disappeared from the mining camp on the Stanislaus River. The five men who had murdered Joaquin's wife. Already, the fiery young Mexican was a hunted man, and his only means of living was to add robbery to murder. Quickly, he gathered recruits to a desperate band of Mexicans. Cutthroats, renegades, murderers, all desperate all willing to slit a throat for a piece of gold, especially if it was an American throat. Soon, the fame of Joaquin Murrieta was spread throughout all California, and terror went with his reputation. Periodically, he took his accumulated loot down into Mexico, and it was on one such journey that he again met his childhood playmate. It is good to see you, Senorita Clarita. You have come back to us, Joaquin, to stay. No. I still have much to do before I can come back here and forget. Joaquin... You go away, back to that dangerous life. Ah, you know? Of course. Who has not heard of the exploits of the famous Joaquin Murrieta? Then you will know that I am not the Joaquin Murrieta you once knew. And you should think no more of me. I care not what you have done, what you do. My heart will always be yours. I cannot... So much? See, si. Every night I pray to the Virgin Madre to keep you from danger. But your ring, the little ring you gave me, will do that, eh? You still wear it, Joaquin? See, si, of course. Here it is. Did you not ask me to wear it? See, si. I am happy. Oh, Joaquin, if only you would forget everything. Give up this life. Settle down here. We could do no, so... No, Clarita, I cannot. I have sworn to have vengeance on the Americanos. And I have not done enough yet. Very well, querido. If you will not stay here... Then take me with you. Eh? Take you with me? See, si. wherever you go, to share the dangers with you. You love me that much? See, si. And if you do not take me, I shall follow anyway. Always with you, my love. Back to California came Murrieta bringing with him another lovely Mexican beauty. And now his depredations were resumed with increased fury. His band numbered a hundred cutthroats, and they ranged in small bands from one end of the state to the other, robbing, plundering, and killing. Most of their crimes were characterized by extreme audacity. For instance, as Joaquin was staying at San Gabriel, he received word that Sheriff Ben Wilson of Santa Barbara was in Los Angeles, boasting that he would capture Murrieta at any minute. And so, one afternoon... As Wilson stood in front of a Los Angeles hotel. Sure, who's afraid of this Murrieta? He's got the whole state buffaloed, except me, Ben Wilson. <laughs> I ain't scared of him. 
All I want is to meet him face to face. Then you'll see how fast I can cut Mr. Joaquin down to my side. Yeah, I don't know, Sheriff. Sheriff Muriette is a tough customer. He don't know the meaning of fear. If I was you, I wouldn't be too cocky about catching him. <laughs> Why, well, it'll be easy, I tell you. The hombre is yellow underneath. He's afraid to fight, Square. Pardon, senor. Uh, you are Sheriff Ben Wilson? That's me. I have heard that you are looking for me. Yeah, and who might you be? I am Joaquin. You are? Uh... What's that? Holy mackerel. Get out of here. You're walking? See, si. so take me if you can. My jelly. Oh. Oh. So, Joaquin will be easy, eh, senor? Well, you have a long time to think that over. Eternity. Yeah, what do you think of that now? The whole thing there. Two shot right here. Weeks stretched into months, and Joaquin's band counted their murders by the hundreds. From one end of the state to the other, rewards were offered. Five thousand dollars here. $1,000 there for Murrieta's head. More and more bands of armed men roamed the hills looking for the bandits. Joaquin met them on every road. Usually none of them returned. They were wiped out. But nevertheless, the robber baron found it more and more difficult to get around without a fight. Some of his most trusted lieutenants were killed or captured and hanged. More and more, he kept to his faraway hideout in remote Arroyo Cantuva. But even there, he wasn't safe. For one day, a rider came in with the news... Joaquin! Joaquin! See? What is it, Jack? What is the trouble? Riders, Americanos. What? Well, riding through the lower end of the valley toward the pass. Going away? See, si, but they were in the valley. There's only 14 of them. No doubt they realize they wouldn't stand a chance against us. But they have seen us. They have found our hideout? I don't know. I think so. And they go to bring others. Come! In the saddle, hombres! These Americanos must not leave this valley alive! Come! In a bloody fight, the Americans were massacred. All except one. And that one did leave the valley alive. And Murrieta knew that now even his hideout was unsafe. And it was Clarita who pleaded with him. Joaquin, querido mío, you must give this up. Be back to our home in Mexico. You have done enough. No, not quite. I have much money, see. But my plans have not all been completed. Please, Joaquin, for me, you must go back now. I fear for you. Ah, no, little dove. For do you forget? I have the ring here on my finger. It shall keep me safe. Never fear. They will never take Joaquin Murrieta. But even then, men were vowing that they would take Joaquin Murrieta. A company of 20 of the hardiest fighters in the state was organized under the command of Captain Harry Love. And soon these men were hot on the trail of Joaquin. Under the extreme pressure now being brought by the forces of law and order, many of Joaquin's spies deserted him and betrayed him to the officers. He was hunted at every turn. Still... He would not give up. He was trying to hold out until his reinforcements from Mexico arrived. He split up his band into small groups to avoid detection. With him were five men, including the notorious three-fingered Jack, the human fiend whose bloodthirsty habits disgusted even the robber band, but who was too valuable to lose. Jack was retelling one of his gruesome experiences as the six men had breakfast around a campfire in the Tulare Valley one day in 1851. Joaquin! Come and listen to this. No, gracias. I must cut him my horse. Ah, you can do it later. Come and listen to my little exploit with the China. Good morning, senor. What? Hey, who are you? How did you get here? Oh, we just saw your campfire and wandered up sort of silent like. Didn't know who we might disturb. And who are you, senor? Never mind that. The question is, who are you? Just peaceful travelers stopping for breakfast. Uh-huh. What are you bound for? Los Angeles. Uh-huh. I wouldn't move toward those guns of yours on the blanket, senor. You see, we've got you all covered. No, I did not want the guns. There is a little ring there beside the guns. I I thought I'd get that if we are to have company. I'd like to look my best. Never mind. Your looks don't bother us. That you, Bill? Oh, uh, yeah. I uh, see you found some fellow travelers. Yeah, that's what they say. Well, so we meet again, senor. See? Si? We meet again, Senor Burns. Oh, you know him, Bill? I know him all right. I saved his life once. But this time it's different. This time I can't save you, Joaquin. Joaquin? You you mean this is him? Yeah, this is him. Look out, he's jumping on that horse. Get him! After him, man! Don't let him get away! No! Get the other! You got him? He's down? Joaquin's wounded. Yeah! Up to him now, man! Be careful! All right, come on. All right, he hasn't got a gun. Anyways, too far gone. Yeah, that's right. Hey, they've got the others all right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Joaquin, 
I have burns. You see, I have come to this. Yes. It was the ring. I took the ring off. Clarita's ring would have saved me, but I took it off. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. No, it doesn't matter now. It's too late. I am finished. You can be thankful it's this way and not hanging. Joaquin, why'd you bring this on yourself? Oh, it is all right. I have done what I swore to do. I have revenged my wife, my brother, myself. I, I can die content. Adios. Adios, amigo mio. Adios, Joaquin. Well, that's the end of him. California is rid of another bandit. Don't be too hard on him, Captain. He was wrong, but he wasn't entirely to blame. He could have been much different if things had been different. No man today can hit you over the head with a pistol butt and rob you of your land in the way that the renegade American miners rob Joaquin Murrieta of his mining claim. But a defect in your title to your home could deprive you of it just as effectively. And unless you were protected by a policy of title insurance, you might have no recourse. The defect might be a false personation or the hitherto undiscovered forgery of a deed executed in some previous transfer of the property. Either of such circumstances or any of other circumstances might render your title invalid. However, if you had obtained a policy of title insurance from the Title Insurance and Trust Company protecting you against such defect, any loss you might suffer would be repaid promptly up to the full face value of the policy. It is because such protection is available that land is today such a sound investment and such a readily marketable commodity. In most parts of the United States, the cost of this protection is considerably higher than the rates charged by the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. Now, what's the story for next week, Frank? Next week is Easter Sunday. There's no more appropriate time to tell you the story of the Easter Day Ranch, the Rancho San Pasquale. Today, the land of San Pasquale contains the cities of Pasadena, Altadena, and part of South Pasadena. And its story is a dramatic and colorful one that you'll want to hear. Until next week, then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras. Y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Gaylord Carter. Bob Lamond speaking and saying good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.